You might have some spare money lying around, it's not enough for a house, but you think you should be doing something with it. You've heard of people making money from investing, but you're not quite sure where to start. There's lots of different things you have to keep in mind, and once you start researching it, there's all these jargon terms thrown around like dividend, ETF, P ratio, what does it all actually mean? It seems like you need hours of spare time and lots of experience, and of course there's the very real risk that you might lose your money as well. During this video we'll be answering all of these questions and showing you exactly what the Australian stock market is, why do stocks go up and down, showing you what companies you should be investing in and exactly how to set up your own brokerage platform and make your first investment. So firstly, what is the ASX? It's represented by 200 of the biggest companies in Australia. So think of companies like Coles, Woolworths, JB Hi-Fi, the major banks like Westpac, NAB, Commonwealth. So these types of companies make up a large proportion of the overall Australian stock market and they're publicly traded on a stock exchange. Now the reason that companies do this is because it allows them to gain more money and revenue to grow their business so to do things like hire staff, purchase resources, warehouses to store products, all the different things that are related to growing a company. When they're publicly traded on a stock exchange it makes them available to retail investors like you and me to put our money into them. So someone might invest a thousand dollars into Coles with the perception and belief that it's going to make them money in the long term. Coles will use that money to grow the business, albeit at a small amount with only $1,000. But when there's enough people putting their money into these companies, they have more and more revenue and they can gradually use this to grow the business itself. As the business grows, the stock price increases and the investor will make money from this. So if you put $1,000 into Woolworths, the stock price goes up 10%, then you've made $100. So that's essentially the relationship that the investor has with the stock and the reason that companies will list themselves on public stock exchanges and make them available for people to invest in. So when you invest in a company, technically you become part owner in that business, albeit at a small amount. But it doesn't mean if you buy some shares of Woolworths, you can walk in there and start taking things off the shelf and walking out without paying for it. You are just a small contributor to that business. So when the company is doing well and is profitable, the share price is going up, the money that you've invested will also go up relative to the percentage of how much that share price has increased. So if we take a look at the five year return of Woolworths, it's gone up about 40%. So $1,000 invested into Woolworths five years ago would have netted you a profit of $400. And in terms of why stocks go up and down, there's lots of different factors. So there's economic circumstances or interest rates. For example, back when COVID was around and the world was in lockdown, major indexes like the S&P 500, which track the 500 biggest publicly traded companies in America, similar to the ASX 200, that went down over 35% during the pandemic. And and the two main ways that you make money from investing is either from capital gains, so you buy a stock, it goes up a certain percentage and then you sell it. Of course, when you sell the stock, there's tax obligations as well. So I won't get into the finer details of tax and investing in Australia. Make sure to speak to a licensed accountant, which isn't me, but capital gain is the main one that people will know about. And then there's also dividends as well. This is essentially a payout to a company's investors from the company's profit. So for Woolworths, you get a 2.9 3% dividend and say you invested $1,000 you're going to get $29.30 back during that year from the dividend. So dividends are also paid out at different amounts or rates so you can have ones that are say annually or others that are quarterly payments and they're not always guaranteed. Even the major four banks during the coronavirus pandemic couldn't pay out a dividend so that's NAB, Commonwealth Bank of Australia, Westpac and ANZ. Even these big major financial companies weren't able to honor their dividend payments so it's always at the discretion of the company if they want to actually pay out that dividend. It's not guaranteed, but for the most part, it will happen. Something pretty extreme like the COVID pandemic doesn't come around very often. So on average, a dividend will be paid out and it will be honored. Normally, it'll go up slightly every year. But again, this isn't guaranteed. But a dividend is a nice way to get a return from your investments. And again, there are rules and regulations around paying taxes on dividends, but I won't get into that in this video. And another thing to keep in mind is that the price of a stock won't always go up in a straight line. So you can see for Woolworths over the past five years, there's lots of peaks and valleys that it had to get to that 40% return. So statistically, the longer you hold a good strong business, the more you're going to have a gradual increase in your profit. So with Woolies in the past six months, it's lost almost 7% of its value. But in the past five years, it's gained 40%. So in the short term, you're not always going to make profit. But in the long run, if you hold a good business, that's when you're going to get those accumulating returns. 
So moving on, what should you be investing in? So when it comes to the stock market, there's two main options that you have. There's ETFs and individual stocks. And ETF stands for Exchange Traded Fund. And it's essentially a collection of multiple different companies clumped together based on a particular investment goal. So with the ASX 200, its purpose is to track the biggest 200 companies in Australia. You can also get other ETFs that might track a specific sector of the market, like property or healthcare, and then ones that can track commodities like gold or silver. So for the ASX 200, on average, it's gone up about 8 to 10% per year. So if we stay a bit more conservative and say that we're getting an 8% return, it means that every nine years, our money is going to double in value. So as a practical example of this, if we invested $5,000 every year for 40 years, starting at 25 and finishing at the retirement age of 65, over that 40 years, we're going to make a profit of one point. $29 million on an 8% return. So in comparison to just saving that money and stuffing it under your mattress, keeping it in cash, you'd only have $200,000. So over a $1 million difference between investing and just saving your money in cash. So the top 10 holdings for the ASX 200, you can see them here. So there's BHP, Commonwealth Group, CSL, all big players in the Australian economy. So if you go to say a company that's in the 193rd place, like Fletcher Building, it only makes up 0.09%, you're only going to put in 90 cents into Fletcher Buildings in comparison to over $100 into BHP Group. So not every company is going to have exactly the same amount of your money. It depends on how much they actually make up the particular ETF. So moving on to individual stock. So these include companies like the big banks, Commonwealth Bank of Australia, NAB, Westpac, and then other large businesses like Coles, Woolworths, JB Hi-Fi, CSL are all part of the major individual companies that make up the Australian market. With individual stocks, one of the main benefits is the potential to get a greater reward on your investment or a higher total return. So if you take a look at the five-year return for Commonwealth Bank, it's gone up 58%. In comparison to the five-year return of the ASX 200, which has only been 23% over the past five years. Again, CSL is at 45%. So there's better potential reward with an individual stock and it gives you more control about where your money's going. Now, I can't tell you directly what companies you should be investing in that always has to come from your own personal research if you're someone that likes the idea of a better potential reward but more time and effort on your end then individual stocks can be a great option and lastly how do you actually buy shares of a company so firstly you're going to need a brokerage platform in australia there's lots of different options you can invest with a big bank like commonwealth bank there's also individual online stock brokers like weeble and stake and personally the one that i like to use for australia is stake it lets you invest in the ASX and in the American stock market as well. So you can buy into all the big names like Facebook, Google, Amazon. So you're not limited to just the Australian stock market. And if you want to give Stake a try yourself, then make sure to check out my affiliate link in the description box. It'll give you a free stock in GoPro, Dropbox or Nike. And currently the Nike stock is valued at 100 US dollars. So if you wanted, you could sign up, get the free stock, sell it and then withdraw that money into your bank account. And currently they're doing a promotion for the GoPro stock where you'll get three shares of GoPro instead of just one. So once we're on stake, if we type in for the specific company we want to invest in, so let's just say we wanted to buy some shares of Apple, type it in, there it is at the top, and then you just want to click on the buy option. So there's a few different buying options available that you can do. So there's limit buy order or market buy and market buy is the one that I typically go with. So you're just currently buying the shares of that stock at the current market price. So you put in the amount that you want to invest in. So say if it was $100, you'll pop that in here and then you'll click review buy and then those shares will show up in your account. But essentially that's all the steps you need in terms of actually buying some shares of a company in Australia. So if you want to see how to use stake, its premium features, how to buy and sell shares a bit more detailed and how to actually withdraw the money from the platform into your own personal bank account, then make sure to check out my full explanation video on stake on screen. But thank you for watching and make sure to subscribe